Hello again everybody and a very warm welcome back to the channel. Today we are taking a look at the new Aerosoft A330 for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. So here she is, a uh, very warm welcome back to all of you, I know uh, over the last few weeks my content has slipped somewhat, but uh, I've got a puppy at home, been on holiday, all that sort of stuff happening at once, so uh, thanks for your patience with content and that, all that sort of thing. Uh, hit like, hit subscribe, if you're new to the channel as well, and share your thoughts as always down in the comments section below. The links for this will be in the description, and uh, as you watch this, the product will be released as well, uh, they've had an embargo on previews for this uh, product for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Now as we know the Aerosoft uh, A330 was announced around uh, I think January 2021 and here we are now October 2024 quite some time down the road and uh, they're finally ready to release a version of what they wished for but uh, some of you might like it a fair few of you might be quite disappointed as an early bit of caveat there for you folks watching um, they're not releasing the entire package. This is the Pratt & Whitney base pack first. And as you can see, initially the flight deck environment looks very, very nice. The detailing on the buttons and uh, hardware around the flight deck is pretty good. It's got a nice ambience to it. But a lot of features in this product are in-op. Rather disappointingly, uh, it has SimBrief integration. It's got a fairly decent looking EFB but um, if we go to the init page here, the init request is not allowed for some reason and uh, the wind not implemented, go to the, per the init page you can manually input the 0 fuel weight, 0 fuel weight center of gravity but the also for input of block fuel there is uh, an option to do the fuel planning as there is in a lot of Airbus aircraft but that is also not yet implemented as well so basics that they've really missed out and uh, with that it means that uh, we're doing a simple showcase flight today for this video from Berlin to Frankfurt but if you were going to fly for example as this did back in the day with Air Berlin from Frankfurt to New York or something similar to that then you're going to spend a lot of time on the ground inputting all of those coordinates all those waypoints for that transatlantic flight not great uh, a lot of kind of in-op buttons and things on the uh, around the flight deck as well and I'm not sure we'll have a little look into it through the flight but I'm not convinced this is a, a custom kind of autopilot system but uh, we'll have a closer look bearing in mind this product has been in um, development now for three years effectively um, there is no cabin I've done my little bit of sort of custom camera uh, trickery to allow me to go into the flight deck and you get this very low poly sort of cabin environment and we pop through this uh, fixed curtain and you get this. Uh, this is what is currently available in the release candidate so that again very disappointing. There is airway insertion which will help for those kind of pan-European or um, intercontinental US flights the Pratt & Whitney version has a selection of liveries a lot of uh, airlines that don't have it anymore or no longer exist like this Air Berlin A330 there's a Czech Airways uh, A330 livery American Airlines LTU Delta and a few others like Air Caribe as well it's got a rather nice EFB and you can uh, control the ground equipment around it, cones, chocks, that sort of thing. And you can pin charts if you've got Navigraph subscription um, to sort this out as well and get this court, this sort of uh, view of the airport to assist with your flights. And you can go into a pushback menu. Which allows you to draw a little bit like um, toolbar pushback actually uh, allows you to draw a pushback 
like so. And with that in mind, once you've sorted out your pre-flight and you've got everything sorted, ready to go for the pushback, you can begin um, this uh, pushback procedure. I'm just going to sort out a few extra little bits of admin here. And here we go. Early thoughts are that Aerosoft are frankly trying to, uh, if I'm honest, push out a product that's not anywhere near ready. Uh, for whatever reason that might be, whether it be because of growing pressure, increasing frustration in the community, because this has taken so long uh, to get to this point. Uh, but interestingly enough, having taken over three years to be developed, it is very, very basic uh, in their offering, which is uh, kind of adding to the disappointment really of the aircraft. The, the exterior modelling is not too bad, the liveries included are quite nice. You see there the automatic pushback didn't even include the tug and uh, there's a lot for them to work on to be to be frank. Personally as well I found throttle calibration, flap for calibration quite clunky and the animations are a little bit uh, blocky, they're not uh, the smoothest as you can see there. Laps 1 plus F looks like this. With some good flap sounds. They have allowed for a window which opens, but again, a bit of a pointless feature, isn't it, really, when uh, it lacks a lot of key system depth, which is a lot more important. During the pre-flight setup as well, it seemed to me that the logic of the MCDU is default working title logic as well. So I put in a uh, the waypoint that I was going to be heading to next after the SID and uh, inserted the runway in the SID. What it then did is it kept that waypoint ahead, creating a little bit of clunkiness, which if you don't recognise will cause you issues after takeoff. And unfortunately this is something that we've seen with FSS in the past when you know, they, those folks are managing this product effectively on behalf of Aerosoft and their e-jets are pretty poor as well. The price of this, because I know you'll all be wondering, is €25.20 Euros and then uh, after the release on October the 7th 2024, eventually at some point in the future, a date that they haven't yet set or uh, even hinted on, yeah, there'll be a Rolls-Royce and GE expansion pack released and each of those separately will be five euros three cents each and these prices are not including tax uh, by the way. In the future again further there's going to be a CEO 3 engine bundle which is going to be 31.92 euros, so the A330 Neo 25 euros 20 and the complete bundle eventually at some point um, forever away will be 37 euros 80 cents excluding tax so a lowish price but a very low quality product from what I've gathered so far it lacks a ton of features and uh, you compare it to the Flabawar A32NX for example the headwind A330neo that's free uses the Flabawar A32NX systems that in my opinion is better than this um, if I'm being brutally honest, at this point in time. Lining up then for the departure. For this short showcase release day flight. 06 right. Now back of the day this would have been from Tegel instead of uh, Schoenfeld, but um, this is what we've got to work with nowadays. Uh, we've got uh, V1 and rotate 139, V2 We'll go stick forward. The trim for this, by the way, for takeoff is up 6.6, .6, which is crazy. Brakes off. Flex. There's an issue straight away. Look at that. Open climb to 41,000 feet. No idea why. A 
80 knots. Do on rotates. D two. Positive right. Gear up. We're gonna have to begin the turn. Try and sort out this altitude issue that we had. Autopilot one engaged. Lap zero. V brakes disarmed. Accelerator to climb it away. I'm going to turn off lights off. And there we have it, uh, airborne in the Eversoft A330. Let's leave a climb. And you can see here it's already getting messy. It wants to turn to 350 for some reason. And uh, I'm having to put it back into managed uh, speed and heading because it's come out of that mode for some reason we will work from there so a release candidate and uh, this is re literally recorded 12 hours uh, 24 hours sorry before the release um, is available for everybody to purchase and download and very uh, unimpressive really Hugely buggy, quite messy, lots of default systems, uh, and woefully uh, under-equipped for certainly VAT sim and all the rest of it as well. So if you want a complete experience, this does not give you that. As always, big thank you to Aerosoft for involving me in this and sending me the the um, product for me to showcase. But uh, as you all know, I'm really brutally honest with my opinions, regardless of. Um, whether something has been sent to me to review for free or otherwise, whatever it might be. And if something isn't worth the money, I'll say that as well. Uh, and this is one of those moments, to be fair. I, like I said at the start, prior to takeoff, it, the Headwind A330 900 Neo has no cabin, but neither does this. Um, it uses the Flabawar A32NX system, so the Headwind A330 is far more advanced than this. The sounds are quite nice. The behaviour of it is a lot better. The autopilot is reliable. And whilst this has a nice external, it's got some good sounds, it's got some nice textures to it as well. There are a lot of key features that are lacking, as we've said a few times today. But uh, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are on this, whether you're going to be purchasing it on day one or not, and uh, maybe what features you would like to see included as a matter of urgency in the product. It's also got that habitual kind of waggly default autopilot L now. You can see as it got towards Gagvi, instead of it just continuing the turn to Ibiki, it rolled left uh, for a brief period of time to kind of chase that line. So as we've said, from what I can tell, it's a default autopilot system, default logic to the FCU it seems, uh, working title stuff for this, and uh, default MCDU probably from the A320 um, plonked into this. I, that's how it seems. Whether it is or not, I don't know. I would need confirmation from Aerosoft. Um, but it's just odd, in three and a half years they've not achieved much beyond uh, an exterior model, some custom sounds, and then put other people's work into their, into their uh, product. It's, it's convinced, it's not, yeah, it's just a bit disappointing, I think.
and having seen it develop in the beta team since 2021, progress has pretty much been non-existent and then frantically uh, over the last few weeks they've suddenly decided to um, release it in the state that it's in regardless. And that's just an odd decision for me. Whether that's had an impact or the uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 has had, had an impact on the release of this and they've thought, you know what, just throw it out, send it. I don't know. I don't really know what the reason is behind uh, this sudden rushed release of uh, Panic. Right, just release it in the state that it's in because it is so um, it is so basic I don't think it warrants the price personally especially when you can get a free A330 Neo and uh, you can get A320s from Phoenix Sim for a very similar price full of rich detail and complexity and simulation and immersion and all the rest of it System performance wise, it seems pretty good, but then, you know, like I say quite a lot, uh, I've got an RTX 4090 and a very powerful computer, so it's very difficult for me to uh, assess performance of an aircraft except for on a balance of my own system and uh, how it works with other, in comparison to other aeroplanes. I think it's pretty middling, it's pretty average, it's not the smoothest of aircraft, and I have noticed some stutters as well. Exterior sounds are quite weak, as you can hear, almost non-existent, as, uh, to be fair, as we move around the aircraft in drone camera. But, as I have mentioned as a positive, the exterior model is quite nice, the liveries that they have included are quite nice. Sad to see that the Rolls-Royce isn't ready, because they've got a really nice Virgin Atlantic livery uh, ready for that one. And uh, I would have liked to have seen maybe the Rolls-Royce version sent first, at least. Currently the dome light is switched off, if we turn it on, you can see it doesn't really have much of an impact on the ambience at all. I'll turn the floodlights to maximum, it's almost as if it's like a on max, keep scrolling. In fact they've just stayed on now. Very odd. Uh, try the floodlight or the pedestal. So that's on max. Very little impact on that actually as well it seems. A lot of kind of <laughs> a lot of bugs, a lot of issues. Underwhelming. In relation constraints they don't really work as expected so we've got the um, arrival procedure constraints in right at the end, we've got a few of them anyway, just one or two. Um, there should have been one at Kerax at or above flight level 110 but that wasn't actually inserted there, it wanted us to remain at flight level 220 so I've gone into Kerax and I've manually inserted uh, a constraint of flight level 110 although it still doesn't really want to achieve that uh, for some reason that then shifted the top of descent marker from kind of where the downwind leg would be all the way to just after uh, Lesmo. So there's a lot more intervention required, a lot more work you have to do and you've got to be really on top of this aeroplane because it doesn't do anything that you actually expect it to do, sadly. It seems very default uh, and it, this video probably comes across extremely critical and rather negative but um, I, I don't want to hide for you guys what this can and can't do. So the bugs that we experienced on takeoff, all of that sort of thing, I'm leaving them in the edit. I don't want to take them out because I think it's really important you guys see precisely how this is um, on the release day to help you decide whether you spend your hard-earned cash on it or not. I think that's that is the most important thing with content creation in Flight Sim, and it does lack in some areas. But I'm always going to be brutally honest. Gonna do a little direct to uh, see how that works. Smooth enough, that does its job as intended. And we're 
we're going to arm low auto brake for top of descent. Constraints are on. The lights here are extremely difficult to see, so you do have to like sort of tri double, triple check. And we've already put in the data for the arrival. We've checked the ILS as well. That's all set. Gonna do a little bit of left and right wiggle. Pop the seatbelt signs on. The uh, call options up here don't do anything either, unfortunately. Um, nice little feature to use, but you can't uh, chime the crew. I'm going to do another direct to Kerax. It's now produced discontinuity. And because I've done the direct to Kerax, which is in the SID, uh, sorry, the star, it's now bugged everything out, as you can see. And actually, we've gone into kind of a weird hybrid mode. So I'm hoping as we pass Gerax, it's going to kind of refresh itself and work itself out, realise it's now in the, s uh, the star, and uh, maybe we'll get that lateral guidance back. But we'll, we'll find out as we get a bit closer. You can see here at 28, uh, 2800 foot per minute uh, for the rate of descent, it's quite slippery. With that, we'll use a little bit of speed brake. Have a look, see how they pop out. Very leisurely, I've put it right out to max. And now I'm going to put it back to zero. See how quick it uh, folds in. Crikey, way too slow. That's not going to help us manage our energy whatsoever. So I'm going to put them all the way out. Wait for however long it takes for them to uh, actually get extended. I need to bring this rate of descent down a little bit as well to try and achieve uh, a bit of deceleration. 2,000 foot per minute, we'll see what happens. We've got plenty of time to sort of decelerate anyway. But I just wanted to see how slippery the jet was. But that's the speed brake fully extended. 2,000 foot per minute. Barely decelerating. By 2,200. It's almost equalising. So let's try uh, 1600 foot per minute, no speed brake. Still accelerating away, 1200 foot per minute. I mean, the jet, this jet's not that slippery in real life, surely. 1200 foot per minute. And the speed's stabilised. got no heading track mode, uh, track FPA, you can see there, that would be really useful in this instance because we could set 
uh, the track required to get to Kerax, but uh, we're going to have to kind of factor in the wind and maybe a little bit of drift. Don't have use of that either, and therefore we can't hand fly the aeroplane and get the bird either. We're just closing in on Kerax in four miles. I've put it back onto like a managed mode to see if the autopilot system is still working in the background. But I've just noticed something that I now can't unsee, uh, and I'm surprised I've only just noticed it actually. But uh, <laughs> we might as well mention it. The standby compass. It hasn't moved. We're flying two two zero degrees. Just stuck on north. What's that all about? Very odd. Uh, I've even thought maybe they've linked it to this, uh, the, uh, the interior lights for the standby compass. So I've turned that off, back on again. Nothing at all. And it may well be that there's a switch somewhere that I haven't quite yet found to get it activated. And we've blown past Carax. And it just hasn't got a clue, has it? We're going to go direct to Delta Foxtrot 437 inside the star, and now we get managed mode back, as you can see. And as we turn, standby instrument doesn't do anything up there. Fixed. I definitely can't see any buttons anywhere for it. So we're still having to keep a really close eye, a hawk's eye, on the aeroplane. Uh, we want to try and get down to about 4,000 feet. So I'm going to begin another descent in vertical speed mode because the VNAV is pretty messy. And you can see here the autopilot is just wonky as heck. It's like it's been drinking all day. And there's sadly very little smoothness to this. When you compare it against a product like the PMDG 777-300ER, which is really rich in detail, it's got a lot of immersive features, uh, a lot of very, very good things going for it, albeit twice the price. You can see here the golfing quality, the massive difference in quality for this aeroplane. I don't even know where it's going now, look, it's just finding it nearly impossible to get back on that on our track. And for a product that's been going through development for three and a half years, something like this is frankly not acceptable. Um, I personally would have liked to have seen Aerosoft learn over the last few years from its CRJ development, which is now still waiting, we're all waiting for an update for that, so apparently supposedly that is coming, um, and that's got this wonky autopilot in it as well, but being a little regional jet, that's got some really nice features associated with it that you can kind of, not necessarily forgive the lacking of features, but uh, you, can, you can kind of work with them and be a little bit more forgiving perhaps of, but three and a half years later, this is now coming along, and it's almost as if they've not learned a single thing and it's really, really disappointing. And I'm having to then intervene here just to try and make it realise that uh, <laughs> it can't just keep going left and right to achieve its LNAV track. Yeah, the textures inside the flight deck are really good, the proportions of the flight deck and the way they've modelled this, it, oh, yeah, they're really nice. Uh, and as we said at the start, you go down low and you look at some of the features and the textures and things of the aeroplane. They're really good as well. That's yeah, The way they've developed this is very nice as a look and feel point of view, but uh, everything else just it's not existing, is it? It's, now it's blowing past Delta Fox 3... 
437 and it's like the LNAV just isn't really functioning anymore sadly so we're going to be self vectoring to final approach it's getting a right mess again look at that come up with not allowed there for some reason Four three nine is next. I'll try and do a direct to four three nine. On the glide, then uh, we're going to go gear down. We're currently one eighty. We'll reduce that to one sixty and continue to extend the flaps, eventually to achieve full flaps. We've got the terrain on nav display switched on, but not getting anything at all on that. So that again won't be a feature that's working. And there's. Uh, no weather radar either from what I've seen over the last uh, couple of flights and uh, including this one as well, this showcase uh, service out of Berlin to Frankfurt that we're doing today for the video. 2, would I recommend this aircraft? <sighs> Unfortunately no, the answer would be for that. Um, it is lacking far too many features and is effectively just a default aeroplane that I would expect to be a part of the base package of MSFS, to be honest, uh, it's no better than the default A320 uh, and that sort of thing, which is really disappointing bearing in mind that this has been in development now for uh, three and a half years and whether they've had development fatigue and they're just sending it and pushing it out or the new sim is coming imminently and they're worried about uh, never releasing this aeroplane, I don't know, but uh, yeah, really underwhelming, uh, frankly extremely disappointing. But here she is for final approach for today's video. Almost fully configured. We're going to go down to 160, uh, to a full DME, full flaps, and then get her on the ground with this crosswind here at Frankfurt. We're going to put her on managed speed mode and see how she behaves. And we're going to keep it going all the way down to minimum. And for the purpose of today's video, we're going to vacate right to the old terminal. Using a lot of power just to maintain this uh, descent. Landing inhibit mode's just gone active. And it's finding itself a bit bumpy, isn't it? It's a bit wiggly. Not settled. autopilot off. Then my key binds haven't worked. Five hundred. Four hundred. And it does to hand fly feel a little heavy. It doesn't feel immensely heavy, but there is an element of inertia with roll and things which you do need to bear in mind. The flight model doesn't feel terrible. That's uh, one nice positive to this. Two hundred three hundred. Above. Sudden bit of sink there, which just caught us. Minimum. Wait. One hundred. Looking ahead. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Retard. Five. Touchdown. That was a bit of back pressure there, but the nose still wanted to drop. Reverses are active. We've got D-self, the order brake low. You can see how it's decelerating here. It's actually quite reluctant to decelerate. That's full reverse. A little early for the touchdown. 
I'm going to take over manual brakes. They click off quite quite uh, nicely, actually. You don't have to really firmly press like you do some of the aircraft add-ons. I'm going to work brakes manually now to vacate here. And that's actually now maximum braking. It's uh, not majorly effective. But good speed to vacate. Let's roll off. So, as we said at the start, share your thoughts down in the comments section below. You might actually look at this and think, you know what, this is what I want. This is uh, this is fine by my standards and this is what I enjoy from the sim side of things. Uh, and if it is, then that's great. The link is down in the description below uh, and you'll be able to purchase it after watching this video on the Aerosoft website. Make sure you hit like and subscribe down below. As we've said before, share your thoughts in the comments below as well. And keep an eye on the channel over the next few weeks. I'll be hoping to create uh, some additional videos uh, involving things like the Flight 1737 Max, which is phenomenal. Uh, and that is very much on a par with Phoenix A320, the PMDG 777 and 737 series and that sort of thing. So we've got a new competitor to the high quality market of add-ons coming imminently. And Aerosoft sadly remain in kind of a low to low average uh, standard of development with this aircraft add-on by comparison. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video, I hope you've enjoyed the honesty as well, um, me sharing my thoughts, uh, albeit as always, flight sim hardware and software, it's all subjective isn't it? Thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll see you next time, take care.